Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are finally getting around to checking out the Cockspur Cessna 510 uh, private jet. We're doing the uh, medical version I believe and which will be simulating uh, picking up a patient from Philadelphia today. We are flying out of Teterboro and heading on over to Philadelphia in the Cessna 510. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, so quick disclaimer, guys, as I do with most of my first impression videos, guys, I have not flown this aircraft. Some of you like it when I do that. Some of you don't. I understand both sides. Uh, it's just the way I like to do it. That way you get everything in the raw first impressions. Nothing's been rehearsed, practiced or figured out. We're just going to do it from a first person standpoint or a first uh, flight standpoint and uh, see what the aircraft is all about. Now, there is some pretty uh, decent documentation that comes with the aircraft. Um, brings everything from the normal procedures, gives you some background on the information or background information on the aircraft as well. The avionics breaks down the different flight surfaces. It's pretty good documentation. The only thing that I don't like about it is that it doesn't give you any kind of chart or anything to figure out weights and balances, trim settings. Uh, doesn't even tell you what the trim settings are or flap speed settings. Now we are going to look at the checklist inside the simulator to see if by chance that that provides a bit more information. Sometimes they stow it in there when, uh, you know, you click on a specific line item, it'll tell you. So we'll be looking for that and seeing what it does and working our way through. But uh, pretty good checklist. Again, it goes all the way through the normal procedures, breaks down the cockpit tour, which you guys know that I appreciate. I always love that kind of stuff. Um, has some pretty neat features in it. The, uh, the aircraft's been done pretty well as far as I can tell. I mean, we won't know until we really get up and airborne to determine what the uh, final thoughts of it are. But uh, let's see what happens. So it's similar in size to, for example, like the Honda Jet. Um... It's uh, not a particularly huge aircraft. So if we come back here, you know, very tiny, very tiny. And again, this is the medical version. So that's a gurney that we got there or life light. And uh, I haven't found a way if we can actually put, you know what? Actually, I haven't checked something. Hang on. Let's check the payload real quick. Okay. I didn't know if maybe if we increased the payload, if it would, you know, add passengers or whatever. Um, I also have the visual passengers disabled. So that could be part of that too. So keep that in mind. Um, but let's go ahead and mess around with a couple other things here. You can open the doors. I wish there was some audio there. I can't hear any kind of audio when the doors open, which is kind of weird. Uh, the shades, I actually kind of like this. You can open and close shades. You just click and drag uh, to where you want to be. You can move the air vents around and things like that. So, you know, simple stuff that just sort of enhance the gameplay a little bit, if you will. Let's go ahead and jump up front here and start working through. Now, we're not going to go through all the pre-flight uh, cockpit procedures. Um, there's a lot, it is pretty detailed. Actually, what the hell, let's, let's just see how long it takes us to get through. If I decide it takes us too long, then we'll, we'll move on. Um, but let's see here. So preliminary exterior inspection. We have a battery connected. Engine covers have been removed. Pedo covers are removed. Static wick covers are removed. Ground power unit not connected. Cabin inspection, documents, manuals, and charts are all on board. Required equipment on board and serviced. Emergency exits, lock pin has been removed. Passenger seats are upright. We were just back there. Exit pla placards are secure. Door entry lights are off. Fire extinguisher is serviced and secured. Uh, gust lock removed and stowed. Circuit breakers are all in. Uh, they're non-functional, so it's just simulated. Uh, let's see here. Landing gear handle is down. Anti-skid switch is on. Let's go ahead and get down here and start taking a look. Anti-skid switch ooh, is off. All right. Anti-skid switch is on. All other switches are in the off or norm position. Clear that so I can see what's behind there in the ELT. Okay. Uh, put that back on. All right, that looks good. And where are we? Uh, do, 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 emergency gear release is installed. Honestly, I actually don't know where that is. Maybe this guy under here. Looks like that red cover. Um, let's see here. Let's keep moving on. I don't want to focus too much on stuff like that yet. Um, not for this video anyway. Parking brake is set. Where are we? 
And see, this is where things start to get interesting. Elevator trim set and uh, or check and set for takeoff. I can't yet. Um, well, unless, 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 does it have... This is the other thing. That, so there's a couple weird graphical issues with the text. Uh, trim. Well, it says trim nose down. I don't see any kind of indicator that says takeoff or flight or detent. Anything like that. So... Uh, we, we don't know what the trim setting is supposed to be. And again, we'll we'll check the in-game checklist here in just a minute here. Uh, let's see here. Where were we? Uh, pedo static switch on. 30 seconds and off. We don't even have any battery turned on. Flap handle. Check operation. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and turn the battery on, I guess. So I think it's supposed to have an electric power cart. Not the ground power cart, but it said battery connected. So um, maybe the in-flight battery, I guess. Uh, so let's see here. Do, 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 do. Let's keep moving on here. Passenger safety switch is off. And that is here at the passenger lights. Landing gear position lights, three green. Flap handle check operation. Do the flaps actually actuate with under electrical power? Or are we just checking that the flap handle works? Looks like we're just checking the flap handle works. Okay, that makes sense. Because I was going to say there isn't any... Hydraulic power, so. Unless it has electric hydraulic pumps, I guess. Um, but I can't imagine those would run off the battery. Flap handle check operation, aileron and rudder trim. We'll mess with that as we get further into it. See, that's the thing. A lot of the stuff we have to sort of figure it out as we go along here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the in-game checklist for a second. And non-existent, so that's it. So that's my first... Uh, bad score if you will is that the checklist isn't detailed enough you know it just says flap set trim set but doesn't tell you what those settings are supposed to be so hopefully we get some further information uh this is just our airspeed or max performance plates which is good still handy um but it's not it doesn't give us any kind of chart for trim and things anyway we'll keep moving on uh let's see here oxygen control valve right here is in the normal position left and right generator switches are down or oh, that's ignition where's where's the generators i just saw them uh oh generators left and right generators are we have norm and off unless i am missing a switch windshield that's all your anti-ice anti-ice protection oxygen masks fuel boost pumps fuel transfer switch So that's got to be the gen switches. So I can't imagine those come on yet. So we're going to leave them in the off position for now. Uh, let's see here. Where are we? Left and right ignition switches. Oh, I'm sorry. I see it now. My bet. Wow, really? Before engine start. So it says left and right gen switches go to gen. Before engine start. I'll be damned. That's kind of interesting. Um, left and right ignition switches are in the norm position. Left and right uh, fuel boost pump switches are in the norm position. There we go. Fuel transfer knob is off. Uh, where was I? Pilot mic switch. That's going to be up on the uh, yoke. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, they're, they're set to headset, though, is what we're looking for. And let's see. Let's keep on going here. Where was I? Oh, never mind. Oh, I was reading oxygen. I'm an idiot. Forgive me. Pilot mic switch right there. It goes down to headset. I only read oxygen. I read up above it. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, let's see here. Where are we? Uh, we are. Okay. So ice protection switches are all off. Okay. They go back to the center position. Up. Uh, ice protection. Forward, upper, forward ice protection switches are off. Pedostatic heat is off. Landing gear handle again down. Lights three green. Anti-skid switch is, in fact, on. Passenger safety switch, again, off. It's like I repeat some of this stuff. External lights as required. So let's go ahead and we're going to turn on the beacon light because we're going to get started pretty quick here. Nav light and wing lights. Uh, we don't need any internal lighting, but there's our internal lighting knobs there. Uh, cabin dump switch set to norm. Let's see here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Where are we? There it is. Cabin dump switch set to norm. And where were we? See here, most of this stuff's in op. Air conditioning works, okay. Uh, where was I? Air selector source set to both. Air selector source. Oh, there it is, right there. Air selector source set to both. Um, pr 
press continuation switch. Pressure continuation switch. That's what that is. Got to be in the norm position. That's this guy down here. Now I got you. Okay. Um, it just said press, so it threw me off. Uh, cabin dump switch. We already checked. Oh, I skipped a line. That's how I got there. Co-pilot mic switch set to the headset. It is indeed. And ELT is set to arm. That is the down position. It is indeed. Auction supply handle push in. That is going to be this guy right here. All right. There we go. Pushed in. Throttles are in cutoff. Where are we? Throttles cut off. Engine sync switch norm. Engine sync switch. Engine sync switch, guys. That's what we're looking for. That's got to be the emergency gear release handle. Um. I don't see the engine sync switch. So I think for the moment, I'm gonna leave that as is. And again, I don't wanna to waste too much time playing hide and seek. I don't wanna waste you guys' time. All right, let's keep on going. I'll, I'll find out later. Uh, let's see here, battery switches. Okay, so see, now we're getting into the checklist again or into the uh, pre-start. All right, so battery. Uh, goes to the or battery switch goes to the battery position standby switch I saw it there we go um, is an off parking brake is set again landing gear down three green cockpit lighting is required avionics power switch goes to the on position as it is uh, fuel quantity balance check and required so we actually need to set our fuel and we're going to do that according to sim brief so give me just a minute let's pull that up sim brief we are looking for 2180 for block fuel today and we're going to do that from the default menu uh current fuel we have 1290 moving that way up let's do yeah i'd rather be higher than my, oh i almost had it there we go 2193 i like that okay there we go all right so fuel is set let's go back to the checklist and we know that uh, Microsoft balanced everything, but let's check our tanks. There's our tanks right there. Everything looks good. It is using the G1000, as you guys can see here. Although it's got a little bit of a different uh, interface, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see here. Database chart currency. Yep, we're good there. Fuel quantity balance. We checked that. ATIS clearance. All right, so let's go ahead and simulate. We've gotten our ATIS. So we set our barometric pressure. We've gotten our clearance. Let's go to the transponder. Let's go to our code here. And let's say we are running 4-4... Four, four zero one how about that and we're gonna leave that on in standby at the moment we're just gonna leave i think we're gonna leave the transponder up for now because it's a good way that i have found to remember to change it with the g1000 i always forget to i'm terrible about it okay coming down here pre-flight inspection complete wheel chocks have been removed cabin door let's get the door closed okay door is closed secured master caution reset here uh, where are we? Passenger briefing is complete. Seats adjusted and secured. External light switches are on as required. Air conditioning switch is off. We did just check that, but we'll check it in. Oops, I just hit the damn trim. That could be interesting when it comes time for takeoff. Uh, air conditioning is, in fact, set to off. Uh, where are we again? Cabin and cockpit fan knobs are in the off position. ECAST, check. Check for the ECAST. We just got low volts and pitot heat off. And battery voltage check should be above 28 point something volts. <laughs> I don't remember what I read, although it's only showing 24.6. So I'm wondering if that's for how long it's read or been running, but uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to try it without starting, without connecting a GPU. And we're ready to start. So engine start switches is the, let's see here, press just the illuminated corresponding engine start switch. We'll move the throttle to idle, monitor N1, uh, abort if no N1 by 40%. Um, and let's see here, ITT, check for rise, oil pressure, steady increase, engine should be stable within 45 seconds. All right, so it's just a little boop. Okay, N1's rising, throttle to idle. Sound is pretty good on it. Whoa. Yeah, I'd say the sound works. I 
Engine one. And that temperature is increasing. And one still on the rise. All right, looks like we're stable. Let's re rinse and repeat for two. Probably should have started with the right engine, but. Yeah, I really dig the engine sounds. I like the startup sounds, pretty good. All right, engines are started, left and right generators are on. Still waiting for two to come up to idle. All right, looks like we're golden. All right, so we can turn our air conditioning on. Anti-ice as required. We're going to go ahead and turn the left and right oh, engine on, wing stabilizers. Stat pedo heat, we'll wait until we get ready to roll here. Uh, let's go back to our flight plan, get it entered in. All right, so now let's go ahead and start entering the flight plan. Now, there's a couple different things to be aware of. First off, um, I was super excited to see this keyboard here. Um, and as So this is my second time trying to record this particular part. Um, we were going to use the MFD controls and enter in everything using the keypad, but the actual letter keypad doesn't work, um, which sucks. <laughs> so, really there isn't much advantage to using this, especially for the fact that it's using the G1000 NXI, uh, because you can actually just use our physical keyboard to type everything in on the end screen. So we're just going to enter everything in the MFD. Um, again, it needs to control the MFD, um, so the function is the same, obviously it's a larger screen, but uh, the drag is what you Really, and then you'd have to keep switching the camera down to grab the control areas in order to manipulate the menu here. Here, if we just have this one with the square and that's what we're going to do. Here. So let's uh, bring that in here. All right, let's see what we got going on. So our, for our flight plan, flight plan. For our flight plan today, we are departing Teterboro from runway 19. We're flying direct uh, to SPJ, direct to Busky, direct, direct. <laughs> They're all directs. All right. Well, so we don't have to worry about uh, a whole lot here. So let's go from our flight plan menu then, and let's enter in our origin. So we're just going to come back up here, hit enter. Oh, next line. Sorry. Hit, then hit enter. Use our rotary. That's what I wanted. KTEB. Okay. Oh, that's our waypoint. Damn it. Sorry, guys. Let me go back up. It just dawned on me that I went down to the waypoint line. I didn't want to. All right. So now let's do things there. I was right. Huh. For some reason, I thought I was wrong. For some reason, I thought this always said departure airport. I haven't used the G1000 uh, flight plan in a while, so forgive me, guys. Uh, we're going to hit enter. There we go. Runway. Uh, let's see here. Roll that. Hit one nine. Here we go. We're getting it. I'm remembering some of this. And then we have to scroll down to. There we go. Okay, so that's the entry line. Is all that is. I see. Yeah, and it still says wait. Okay. All right. I don't feel so confused now. And then now we're going to Sierra Bravo Juliet. Go. Press enter. Again. Keyboard. Ah, come on. Got to get right on it, man. Uh, B U S K Y. Does it have it? B U S K Y. That is it, right? B U S K Y. Yep. All right. Hit enter. And let's see here. What's our next one. Our next one is. Come on. Uh, Papa Tango Whiskey. Pottstown. How about that? Okay. And now we are just simply entering the destination. 
Tequila Papa Hotel, Lima for Philadelphia. All right, press enter. Should give us a, yep, runway option. We are plotted for 27 right. And press enter. Boom, there's our flight plan. Uh, let's see here, do we... Let's see, the G1000, I don't think we enter in altitudes, right? Pretty positive we don't. Let's go to the menu. Oh, wrong one. Activate leg, collapse airways. Uh oh. Oh, hey, there's all kinds of stuff in here now, huh? Leave flight plan, invert flight plan. Oh, that's kind of nice. You want to go back the other direction. Hold points. Ooh, buddy, it's been a minute. All right, flight plan. Flight plan. Let's go over to the MFD, make sure it's all there. Yep, looks good. Let me zoom this out a little bit. See, I actually don't. Because of the goofy cameras, this is actually kind of a pain in the butt using the MFD. Whoa, something is not right. I'm glad we checked that. It's our direct from runway 19. Let's go back over here. <laughs> that would have sucked. Ah, you see what I did there? That's our problem. Okay, let's uh, let's change that, shall we? I did a double tap there. S B J. Just one will work. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Ooh, that's better. Oh, I didn't even check it up there. That's why you verify. I almost skipped it. You, you guys heard me. Uh, we need to delete that next one. So how do I delete this way point now? Can you say clear? Uh, yep. And hit enter. There we go. Okay. All right. And now we'll go to our CDI. There we go. <laughs> Mercy. Let's see. Nope. Oh, shit. Ah. Okay. make sure there isn't any activate flight plan button. I didn't think there was with this, but I wanted to be sure. Okay. So that was a cluster. Sorry guys. Can tell it's been a while. Um, let's see our V speeds. Uh, or no, that's our best speeds. Well, rotation. All right. Okay. Do, 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 do. I guess everything's there. See, like, and there isn't any way to calculate that. Like, so I don't have any way of knowing if that's correct. So that's kind of weird. Uh, PFD options. I want to set my winding. I like the wind three up. Gives us direction, speed, and the arrow. Uh, let's see here. I'm not ready for that. We got all that going on. Synthetic terrain I like. Okay, cool. I think we're good to go. You guys are like, thank God. All right. So now at this point, let's do... Uh, Taxi lights. Where is my taxi light? There's a landing light. Beacon nav wing. Oh, taxi. There we go. I see. It's three it's three position switch. That threw me off for a second. Pedo heat. We'll go ahead and turn it on now as we're getting ready to go. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and set up our autopilot panel. So to set our departure heading, we are departing at runway 19, so we're looking for runway 195, or heading 195, excuse me. Let's get that locked in here. Let's turn our flight directors on. And find our runway heading 195. That one's going fast. Oh, mercy, come on now. Come on. One, two, zero, three, zero, four, five. All right, runway heading locked in. We can set the course if we want. Yeah, actually no, we don't need to set a course. Altitude selection, let's set our initial altitude up at 10,000 feet. Uh, let me see what Simbrief has us going to today. 22,000 today. Short flight. All 
All right, we have that locked in. I'm re-verifying our barometric pressure. It looks like it hasn't changed. Good. Um, we also have, they're a little harder to see, but you have some sun visors you can bring down to if you want. <laughs> I think I just hit myself in the head with it. There we go. But they're honestly kind of goofy. There we go. Okay. I don't know if there's like a tablet or something that would appear there. That'd be kind of cool. All right. Well, I think that's it. So here we go. Let's get taxied out to the runway here. Hopefully all goes well. Remember on the, we're going to set uh, flaps one for takeoff. I think it actually does say that part. Yep. Takeoff and approach at 185 knots. Landing at 150 knots. All right, so it gives us that at least. All right. And our rotation is 95 knots, so we can have flaps one all the way to 185 knots, I see. All right. So. Oh, something tells me she gets moving. What's up with the weird bouncing thing it's doing? Be very cautious of the acceleration here. She likes to roll so far. It feels very, uh, very responsive. The engine's like, you can tell they want to go. They want to go, baby, go. Why? 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 See, this is why I always turn the ground. I try to turn the ground equipment on just to give the airport a little light. You see dumb things like that all the time. Oh, it's something driving down the damn tire. Like, guys, cut it out. All right, let's get on down here. Now it does have toga on it. I haven't seen anything indicate an auto throttle though. There's toga. Or I should say go around. I don't know if that would be technically considered toga. But it looks like max power for takeoff does not have an auto throttle because there isn't any way to intervene the speed well there is a flight level change oh speed right there never mind disregard so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna set speed can't put anything in the box yet though huh interesting flight level change a oh, flight level change I can though all right, so let's see here. Best climb, let's do the 200 knots. It's gonna be the best speed. Oh, I forgot to turn our seatbelt signs on. <laughs> Hope everyone's okay back there. <laughs> Anti-collision light on. Uh, let's go. Whoa. Dude, these engines are something. Alright, and we did set flaps for takeoff, right? Nope, not yet. There we go. Flaps coming up. Coming down, I should say. Okay, uh, we're just going to hope and rock and roll. Here we go. Throttles and takeoff position. 
airspeed alive. Very quickly pick coming up on 90 knots. Oof, there's 90 knots rotating. Positive rate achieved, gear coming up. 150 knots flaps coming up. Flying it manually for a minute. Wait for it to give us course direction or course change or waypoint. I don't like that the flight directors aren't steering us. I don't think I missed anything. That's why I was worried if I actually activated the flight plan. It's registering down here that we need to turn, but the flight directors are not. I'm kind of wondering about that. I'm giving it just another minute here. Let's turn yaw dampers on. All right, I'm gonna start rotating. Climbs like a bullet, doesn't it? Holy mercy. So we may have just found a bug. Set the course line. All right, coming up on ten thousand feet. You know, this is why I didn't change it. I forgot to turn the transponder on. Every time, man, I'm telling you. And it, it's the worst with the G1000. I am the worst with the G1000. Landing lights. Approaching our course line. Very stable aircraft, though. Let's go ahead and turn the autopilot on and see what it does. We are in nav mode. GPS choir, there we go, we're turning. Okay, now it's coming around. Flight directors are working. So I'm wondering if that was by design? That was interesting. And the throttles did move back to the cruise position. So yeah, it does have an auto throttle. Cool, so it just works differently. Imagine it engages when the autopilot engages. That would be my guess. That was cool. And see, this is where some of the stuff with the documentation would have been a little bit cooler. Now, it actually may have mentioned that. I think I actually do remember seeing that. While we're in climb, we'll go ahead and, and take a peek at that. Um, I'm going to leave the simulator up on the screen. I thought I had read pretty thoroughly through all of that. But maybe I missed something when I was reading through the avionics. Give me a second here. Let's 
see here. So the screenshot they include, I don't know if I missed something or what. But if you look at the screenshot they included here, it actually shows on the MFD a pre-flight check being done. At, and this is before, so this is before you turn the Garmin on. But when I turned it on, all we got was just the Garmin screen. So I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, something else to be aware of, guys, with this that I meant to mention at the beginning of the video. If you buy this aircraft, you also want to make sure that... Where did I see that? Hang on a second. Here. Make sure you guys check this out. Uh, you want to make sure that you start with cold and dark with this aircraft. Uh, don't try to do a runway start. Don't try to do a already in the air start. Uh, you may have inconsistent performance with the aircraft when doing so. Uh, let's see here. We are up at 18,000 feet. Where's our barrel knob? why it's not going down oh I know why I could have just gone here you know what we'll do that PFD options standard barrel there we go a lot easier she's flying man Beautiful climb. I'm gonna see what happens when we let the FMC take care of it. So I'm just gonna turn off flight level change. Let the aircraft decide where it wants to go. Looks like it's still maintaining that same speed. Monitor our flight here on the PFD. Looks like she's going to take care of everything from here. Let's uh, let's get some outside shots. All right, guys. So we are up at our cruise altitude, and if we come down here, there is our top of descent right there with TOD. So we just need to make sure that we have a reduced altitude set up on our altitude target. By the time that we reach uh, our top of des descent, and the aircraft should automatically descend. So we're gonna go ahead and set that now. I'm gonna start with 10,000 feet here. Set a very short hop today, nothing too crazy, just enough to sort of stretch the aircraft's legs and see what we get. So as we reach the top of descent, I will uh, come back to you guys. All right, so we are almost up at our top of descent here. Cleared a bunch of stuff off the uh, MFD here. I believe we'll still get the alert here on the PFD, letting us know that we're close to TOD. So far, it's a pretty fun little aircraft, I have to admit. Simple. Very simple to get into. I'm sure I've missed a few things here and there of that, of which I have no doubt whatsoever, but... Let's see here. Almost there. And we did turn VNAV on. See how that works. And there's the descent. Airspeed, however, is holding steady. speed at this point. Yeah, manual speed knob does not seem to work, so let's try a flight level change. And, oh. Come on. Okay, 
Okay, so that's buggy. Whoa, what is that about? Interesting behavior there. Hmm. I don't like that at all. So we're changing vertical speed there. I see that's, well, no, because there's speed and there's vertical speed. Let me try rolling the throttles back manually. I guess we have to do that ourselves here. It's interesting. So it, it'll manage cruise, it manages the climb, it all that just fine, but when it comes to descending, it was not going to slow down. And again, I could be doing something wrong. I'm just going based on the documentation that I currently have. Um, it's like I said, it's missing a few things. It's pretty good, but it's missing some critical pieces that can cause some confusion, in my opinion. You know what we can do? Let's select our approach now. Seven right is what we're expecting. Let me check the charts here for Philadelphia. See how I want to go about the approach. Minge is what we want. Minimums, I'm not, well, here, let's set them. We'll do radio. I know we shouldn't. I know I'm being lazy. I know. I'm supposed to do Barrow on Cat 1, but I'm not. So the cool part about me being lazy with the minimums is the touchdown zone elevation for this runway is 11 feet. So, you know, I'm basically still there. Let's go ahead and set this guy all the way down now. We're going to keep that descent rolling. Do, 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 do. Fifteen hundred feet, I believe, is the missed approach altitude. Yep. Let's check our nav radios. Let's see here, nav one needs to be one hundred eight point nine five. Oh, hey, it's already there. Let's transfer. That was nav two, though. Where's my nav one? There we go. That's what I wanted. And final approach course, 268 degrees when it's time. So I don't think... Uh-oh, what did I do? Oh, I changed the barrel. That was dumb. Well, we're at 11,000 feet, so I guess I'll set it now. A little early, but it works. I'm all over the place today, huh, guys? I always get nervous flying these aircraft. But see, this is why I do the first impressions the way I do too. Like, some people may be thinking, oh my god, this guy's all over the place. It's not a tutorial. My idea is to get people like myself who may not be familiar with all of this stuff and, you know, learn differently to get an idea of what you may experience your first time flying the aircraft and so you can be ahead of certain aspects. In so many first impression videos that I see or review videos, you see everything as if everything was working perfectly fine. And I don't know, I just, I like to show the human factor, the, the factor that you may miss something, that the documentation doesn't state something, so you have to sort of wing it, and what that winging it can, potential scenarios you may run into. I will say it's kind of fun actually managing the throttle. 
And I'm still not 100% sure and certain if I'm supposed to be managing the throttle, but I do like it. All right, so as a reference for approach speeds, I'm gonna sort of use our placard here. So max gear extending speed is 250 knots. We're not gonna be doing that. Let's see here, flaps up at 93 knots. Take off or approach flaps at, oh, hey, that did tell us. Flaps, 185 knots for the approach flaps. Okay, and then at 150 knots, I believe it was for landing flaps. And landing looks like approach speed right about 75 knots, so. We're gonna use that for today until I can get further information dug up on this one. But so far, this might be an aircraft I'd be willing to do another guide on um, after I dive far, far deeper into it. It would be a while, but I think it's gonna be worth it. So far, I'm thoroughly, I'm definitely happy with the purchase. Definitely happy with the purchase. You know, and I gotta remember, guys, um, how much this one was. Hang on a second, let me find it for you. Got it directly from Coxburr memory serves. Ouch. Let's see here. C510, there it is. Sim Marketplace, I'm sorry. Uh, oh no, that's where it's coming from, I'm sorry. You can get it from there, uh, it's 24.99 euros from the Coxburr website. It will later be coming to the Sim Marketplace. Sorry, now you have to get it from their website, which I prefer, honestly, I really do. This Sim Marketplace tends, tends to have more problems than it's worth, in my experience. All right, so we are on the approach here. Now what I want to do is actually fly direct. Hang on a second. Let's go to the flight plan here, actually. Let's see here. And I want to... Uh, let's see here. Let's go to procedures. Activate approach. Perfect! That'll be nice. And the initial fix, we should actually be at 3,000. So I'm actually going to lock that in. There we go. And let's start slowing her way down. Start pulling some speed off here. God, the engines just go like silent once you start dumping them. I haven't had to touch the speed brakes once. And landing lights are already on, passenger signs are still on. Everything else should be good. A quick Google reference look like you flare right about between three and five degrees, so typical flare. I can't find anything that says whether or not she has thrust reversers, so we're just gonna try it and see what happens. That's a speed brakes, retract, extend switch. The go around button if we need it. Hundred and eighty-five knots, go ahead and go flaps one. We're configuring very early. Just kinda of want to get an idea for it. She's a bouncy little thing.
All right, so let's check this out. We're going to go to VOR1 here. We need to set our course. I almost had it in there. 267, we're showing 268 is what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to change that real quick. I'm going to activate the approach mode. Here we should start tracking. Now I'm going to go ahead and set our landing elevation again, or at least going to go down to 1500 feet. I mean, it even shows 2100 right here, which is excellent because that is the initial fix. The glide slope should be acquired at Jalto, um, and the uh, required altitude is 2100 feet. So there's our top of descent right there. So it's already marked. So it's taking care of everything for us. So yeah, I just entered in our missed approach altitude. We should be good to go. All right, our distance is about six miles. I'm gonna finish the configuration. We're gonna get configured a little early here uh, just cause I'm not 100% confident on everything that I need to do. So let's go ahead and uh, let's gonna pull some more power back here. Get us down below 150 knots here. We're lining up, no issues there, which is good. There's the glide slope diamond being tracked almost at our altitude, so the aircraft should start descending here any second. There's 150 knots, close enough for me. We're gonna go landing flaps and gear down. Again, just staying ahead of things because it's my first time, so. Yep, check gear, it's coming. And we have started the descent. We're holding about 90 knots. I'm going to add a little bit of power back in. We're going to be looking for about 75 knots on the land. Based on the placard. That's what I'm going by right now is just the placard. Again, all this information may be somewhere that I need to dig up later on. But for now, I'm just sort of winging it. There it is again. All right, so I'm finding holding right about 100 knots. Keeps the aircraft much more stable. We're going to use the speed brakes and deploy once we uh, are ready for touchdown here. And from here, I think I'm going to take control, guys. Uh, so autopilot off, yaw damper off. She's our bird. center line here I don't know if I believe the Pappy lights they're saying we're too low I don't think I agree with that Come left. All right, taking the engines to idle. Speed brakes deployed. Some brakes. And she did not have any kind of reverse thrust, by the way. At least I, I activated them and nothing happened. So let me put it that way. If it had them, I was unable to ascertain that they were active. Speed brakes should be out, though. We're going to check that here in just a minute. Let me clear the runway here. All right, let's go outside for a second. Yep, there's those little speed brakes. They opened up. <laughs> That's kind of dope. Cool. All right, so let's see here. After landing, flat panel goes back to the up position. 
Speed brakes are retracted. Wing stabilizer DI switches are off. Uh, where were we? Engine anti-ice switches off as well. And let's see here. What else? Engine anti-ice switch. Landing light switch goes down to taxi. Transponder. Let's move that to on. And now just time to go park our aircraft. I like it. This is a good airplane. This was this was well worth the money in my opinion. Really nice features. The 1000 NXI integration I think is is killer. Um, flies real well. Flies fun. Keeps you on your toes. Um, reminds me very much of the longitude and the aspect of like its performance. I mean, this thing gets up and goes. Up. So that's kind of fun. Definitely a rocket in the sky. That was a fun little flight. Got real nice nose wheel handling. All right, so let's see here. First thing, parking brake set. Parking brake is set. All right, engine anti-ice switches are all off. Uh, passenger safety switch. No, we got to leave that on for just a second here. Let's do, let's turn our taxi light off. Let's get that turned off here. Oh, I forgot to turn the anti-collision light off. My bad. Um, air conditioning switcher, flap handle, takeoff. Wow, really? So for shutdown, flaps go to takeoff and approach position. Uh, external lighting cutting switches. Okay, so a little weird in the order in which this stuff is done. So let's go ahead and shut the engines off. There we go. All right, engine's coming down here. Now we'll turn the beacon light off. And then from here, it's just a matter of turning off the air conditioning system. Passenger safety switches can now be turned off. Uh, let's see here. All right, we got the flat panel, like I said, take off approach. Avionics power switch now goes to the off position. And it's a two-stage switch. I think it's funny how it turned itself back on. That's interesting. Generators, I'm going to turn off. Why are the avionics staying on? That's interesting. They shouldn't be. Um, where are we? I lost my spot. I lost my spot. Uh, all right. So any cockpit or external lighting switches now go to the off position. And then the battery gets turned off. And that's it. We'll come out here. Open our doors. In our case, get our passenger on board. But there she is. Well, guys, my first impressions of the Cessna 510 from Coxburg is an absolutely wonderful, fun aircraft that is worth every penny of the uh, amount of money they charge for it. Again, I believe that was 23.99 euros. I think that's incredibly fair. Um, it's a for all like for all intents and purposes of what we're looking for. It is a very, very functional aircraft. It didn't have any stupid or weird behavior during flight or takeoff or the transition points. I wish the documentation had been a bit more thorough and provided a bit more information on how to determine things like rotation speeds and all that. But I'm sure we can find that online, which I will absolutely be digging into uh, to see if we can't get a more thorough piece of documentation out for this aircraft. But um, that should in itself say how impressed I am with it. It was a ton of fun to fly. Like I said, um, I, I truly enjoy this one. I'm very, very glad uh, that I have it, and it will be definitely an aircraft that I fly again. Uh, it's nice in the aspect that you can literally just jump into the seat, power on a couple things, and you're up and moving. I mean, it really doesn't take long to start this thing up. Um, and it has a maximum cruising altitude of 41,000 feet, so it can get up there with, uh, with the rest of them. So anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think of the uh, 510 Mustang, if you guys own it. Uh, if you guys are going to be purchasing it based on this, I'd love to hear from you guys and what other, any other thoughts of uh, information you guys may have about this aircraft. As always, stay safe and healthy. I'll see you in the next one.